y equals sine x. How do we graph that and what does it look like? I'm going to lead you through it and say part A, complete the table of values. So here we have our x and y coordinate plane. Notice uh, I've picked these, uh, hand picked these values so it fits nicely. The y values are just regular real numbers but the x values are angles in radians and we generally stick with radians when we're doing trigonometric functions in their graphs. So what we've got here is a bunch of input values and the y is going to be output values and of course we're thinking about this function here y equals sine x. So we're going to do everything in radians. So let's find this first one. How are we going to get that when x is 0? What's the y value? y is going to be sine 0. What was sine 0? Angle here theta. We've got an angle here theta and remember the coordinates of the point going around the circle are going to be cos theta, sine theta. Do you remember where that came from? You make a little triangle there. Remember this is like the point x, y, so you go, you go x along and y up, and that's the unit circle, so it's got a radius of 1. If I do sine theta, I get y over 1. So y is sine theta. If I do cos theta, I get x over 1, so the x is cos theta. And if we're at 0 degrees, if theta is 0, we are here. And what's, what are the coordinates of that point? That point is 1, 0. Okay, so sine 0 is whatever the y coordinate is, which is 0. And this is also the same for 2 pi. If theta is 2 pi, we'll end up at the same place, right? Remember, 2 pi is 360 degrees. So this will also be 0. Okay, now what else can we do? Pi on 2, what's that when x is pi on 2? y equals sine pi on 2 which is sine 90. And what's sine 90? At 90 degrees, we are here. When theta is 90, we're up here. When theta is pi on 2, we're there. And what are the coordinates at this point? That is 0, 1. And the sine is the y value. So what's sine pi on 2? It is going to be the y coordinate there, which is 1. So we have 0, 1. What about pi when we are over here? This is when theta equals pi, 180 degrees. What are the coordinates at that point? Minus 1, 0. And sine is always the y coordinate. So when x is pi, y is sine pi, which is equal to 0. So it goes 0, 1, 0. And what do you think that's going to be in between there? Is there a pattern? Maybe it's going to be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, right? Let's check it. When x is 3 pi and 2, y equals sine 3 pi on 2. What is sine 3 pi on 2? Where is 3 pi on 2? That is 270, which is down here. What are the coordinates to that point? When theta is 3 pi on 2, the coordinates to this point are 0, negative 1. And sine is always the y coordinate, so it's minus 1. And there you go. Okay, we get 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0. So it's up, down, up, down. Really weird, right? Part B says sketch the curve. Uh, so that's all we have um, before we sketch the curve. Let's actually put these points on our coordinate planes. So remember, these are coordinates of points. We've got the point 0, 0. So we've got a point here, 0, 0. Pi on 2, 1, which is up here. Pi, which is back down here, at 0 again. 3 pi on 2, which is minus 1. And 2 pi, which is here. And then we could, if we just follow this pattern, what have we got here? We've got 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0. If I kept going, the pattern continues, minus 1 and back to zero again. And I say sketch the curve for a very good reason. The shape of a trigonometric function is, for, for sine, it's a wave. And waves are very, very useful. You can make predictions about uh, all sorts of things. Okay? And mathematicians and scientists use these. We can model tides, uh, also like springs, uh, masses hanging on springs in physics. They go up and down, they bob up and down. And this is, could be like time here, and this could be like displacement. So, Waves are very, very useful in uh, science and engineering and mathematics. So when I say curve, it's going to go through here and it's going to not be a straight line. It's just going to be a nice wave shape, okay? And I'm going to draw that for you now. And there it is. You should get something like that when you draw it uh, nice and smooth. So right, right here, I might write the equation next to it. Y equals sine x. You notice there's no sharp corners anywhere. It's all smooth everywhere. And uh, it does go on forever. It will keep going. So you don't stop on these points here. You just keep going. This is just a part of the domain that I've chosen. So I can see a full cycle of it. You should notice that the sine curve is always up and down in the corresponding places to ASTC. And another important thing, when it cuts through the x-axis, it's not doing this, by the way. See how I've got it going vertical? 
uh, in the middle here, it never goes vertical. It's actually going crossing the x-axis at 45 degrees. Okay, so when it cuts the x-axis, if you've drawn it to scale, it will cut through at 45 degrees. You can have a look at that on Desmos or on your GDC. What we're now going to do is determine these points. So we're going to find a couple of points that should be on the curve. When x is pi on 6, we're going to find out what some point p is. So the x coordinate is pi on 6. What's the y coordinate? Well, let's just put it back into the equation. y equals sine pi on 6. Aha, uh -huh, and we've done this. What's sine pi on 6? Sine pi on 6 is sine 30. Sine 30 is 1 half. Okay, which gives us the point pi on 6, 1 half. Now, where the heck is that? So here we've got pi on 2. If this is pi on 2, where is pi on 6? Pi on 2 times 1 third is pi on 6. So it's, you've got pi on 2 here. If you divided that up equally into three little intervals, you'll end up with pi on 6. So in other words, if I cut this into three equal pieces, this would be pi on 6. This will be 2 pi on 6. What's 2 pi on 6? 2 pi on 6 is the same as pi on 3. And then we've got pi over 2. Does that make sense? I've got pi on 6, 2 pi on 6, 3 pi on 6. Ah, yeah, so the fractions all sort of make sense. So where's p? p is going to be up here, and I've got a half. The output's one half. Well, hopefully this should all line up nicely. Yes, there it is. That's going to be the point p, okay? p is going to have coordinates, pi on 6, 1 half. Notice I haven't got any decimals anywhere there. Didn't use the GDC. It all came from up here and everything that we've done in the lessons leading up to this. Another one, 5 pi and 3. So the x coordinate is going to be 5 pi and 3. What's going to be the y coordinate? Well, I've got the x coordinate, so I just put that into the formula. y equals sine 5 pi on 3. Where is that? So this is where we've got to use all that stuff we've done before. It's an angle larger than 90 degrees. It's an angle larger than pi. So where is that? Pi and 3, let's cut everything up into um, 60 degree blocks. So let's find this. We've got pi and 3, 2 pi and 3. 3 pi and 3, 4 pi and 3, 5 pi and 3. So A, S, T, C is in the fourth quadrant. What's the acute reference angle here? Theta dash. So I'm dealing with theta is 5 pi and 3. What's theta dash? Well, these are all blocks of pi and 3, aren't they? So theta dash is pi and 3. So y equals sine 5 pi and 3 is equal to just the sine of the reference angle, sine pi and 3. And then you've got to think, do I put a plus or a minus at the front here? Well, in the fourth quadrant, only cos is positive, which means sine and tan are negative. So this is negative. And what's sine pi over 3? Uh, sine pi over 3, sine pi over 3 is sine 60. Ah, sine 60 is root 3 over 2. Okay, so our coordinates are 5 pi and 3, negative root 3 over 2. Let's plot that point Q. 5 pi over 3, where's that? So here's pi over 3, 2 pi over 3. How are we going to do this? This is where your knowledge of fractions comes in. So we've got 5 pi over 3, and here we were dealing with pi over 6, right? So what's this over pi over 3? This is 10 pi over 6. So what if I just keep doing that? I've got pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, and what if I just keep going in uh, units of pi over 6? Let's do it again. We want 10 pi over 6. Pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6, 10 pi on 6, here it is. So this is 5 pi over 3. Oh, and of course, it's in the fourth quadrant like we've got down here. Now, what about the output value? Negative root 3 over 2. What's that? Uh, I don't really need to do this. I can just go down and cross my fingers and hope it's right. But it looks like if I do this, it's going to be like down here. It's actually quite low. It's negative and quite close to negative 1. So this is going to be the point Q. 5 pi on 3, negative root 3 over 2. There we go. And this is negative root 3 over 2. And that's quite close to minus 1. So if you go to your GDC and figure out what is negative root 3 over 2, it should be something quite low and close to negative 1. And if you look at that, it's negative 0 0.87, which looks pretty good. It's uh, close between 0 and negative 1 and close to negative 1. A couple more things about trigonometric graphs for sine. Show the amplitude and the period. So these are new concepts. The amplitude of a wave is its maximum displacement that it goes from the center. Well, this is the amplitude. I wrote it two places here. Amplitude here, that's it. That's called the amplitude, okay? It's also uh, below here, if you like, as well. Amplitude, so it's always from the center 
to its maximum position. Center to its maximum position. Uh, this is not the amplitude here, by the way. From there to there, that is not the amplitude. That is actually two times the amplitude. Okay, so the amplitude is just uh, from the center to its highest or its lowest point. So for our example here, what's the value for amplitude? Well, we're just going from zero up to one. Okay, or well, zero down to minus one. But amplitude is always a positive value. So here the amplitude is one or one unit, if you like, since we're dealing with a length. Now, what is the period? Period is the time it takes to go through one full cycle or the horizontal distance it takes to go through one full cycle. So let's say here we're at minus pi. When's the next time it cuts the x-axis in a downward motion? Here's a start, it's cutting the x-axis here, but no, it's not in a downward motion, it's going up through it. So it's here to here, that is one period from minus pi to pi. What is that distance from minus pi to pi? That is two pi. All right, another way you can think about it is, when you get to the top of a wave, it's called a crest, by the way. Another way you can say it is the period of a wave is the horizontal distance from crest to crest. So here we're at pi on two, but where's the next crest? We can't see it. If your diagram does show two crests, you just measure that distance, or you figure it out. Top to top, crest to crest, how far is that? Or you could think the other way, the bottom, what do pigs eat out of? It's called a trough. And here's another one here, or you could do trough to trough. So what's the distance from here to here? Well, we've got pi on two, and here we've got three pi on two. Okay, so just ignoring the signs, what's pi on two plus three pi on two? That is four pi on two, which is two pi. So we get the same value for period as we got there. Okay, two pi, two pi, whichever way you look at it. Okay, so that is amplitude and period. Last thing, domain and range. So domain is our input list and our range is our output list. What values for x can we put in and get an output? Well, we can find sine, cosine, tan for all values now, can't we? Because we go around uh, the quadrants as many times forwards and backwards as we like, we know how to figure out the output value. So the domain is all real x. All real x or all real numbers. And the range, what are the outputs? Well, the outputs don't go on forever up and down. We have a minimum output of negative one and maximum of one. Our output values are minus 1, y to 1. Is that right? No, because it also actually touches at minus 1 and touches plus 1. Okay, so that's your range. Or you could even write this if you like. You can actually write the function in as its x value there.